my name is Philip Hellier. I'm the Director of Clarity and Transformation at Broadlight. Uh, Broadlight, if you don't know us, we are a cloud and DevOps consultancy where we don't just focus on the technological sides of things, but we really focus on getting the culture change right so that your DevOps projects are a success and your cloud transitions and all those things go really smoothly. Because as you know, you get clever people doing the technical stuff and it's fine, but they need to be able to give in the room to do the technical stuff. And that's one of the roles that we play. Uh, since I'm standing up here and I'm on camera, I should thank our sponsor this evening, which is New Relic. Thank you, New Relic. Brilliant. Oh, look at that. Round of applause. Um, uh, so they have sponsored the bar and the venue, which is fantastic. We look forward to doing more work with them. Uh, we have got three fabulous speakers this evening. Uh, we will have two speakers, and then we will have a break for more drinks, uh, and then we'll have a third speaker, and then we have a prize draw. So I think that's the running of the evening. Uh, and our first speaker uh, is from Alibaba Cloud, which is really rare for to have uh, somebody represented in this country spreading the word of, of that. So I'm really, really excited to us have Asif here this evening as a solution architect with Alibaba Cloud. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here this evening with us. Um, I, I understand you know, there was a bit of conversation downstairs where I was talking about Alibaba, about the wonderful things we do. So hopefully this presentation will give me a chance to talk a little bit more about it. So as um, I was kindly introduced, my name is Asif Malik. I'm one of the solution architects for Alibaba. I look after UKI and Nordics uh, on the retail and uh, security side. Uh, I wanted to share a bit about Alibaba Cloud, what we do as a company. We are um, a number of companies. So we have the Alibaba Cloud division, which I'm a part of. We have Alibaba.com, 1688. The YouTube for China. We have uh, the delivery service, a Just Eat for China. We also have um, uniquely some channels that aren't listed here. Uh, we have um, a transport company called Fliggy, which is uh, similar to your Skyscanner as well. So anything which is in China is pretty much Alibaba. There's a merchant arm and financial arm, which is missing from this slide. But it is, it is one of the things that we uh, do within China as well. The <clears throat> important thing for us is that all these companies, as they grow, as they mature into their own, as they capture the market, they have a competitive advantage. They have the technology, they have the resilience, they have the high availability and security on a platform. And that is the division that I'm a part of. So cloud services, logistic services, and Ali, Alibaba Cloud. We are the, the largest player for China, uh, according to Forrester. Uh, Amazon and some of our other competitors are just a little lesser in terms of market share as well as the technology and the data centers. So that's all very good, right? We, we, we are a number of companies, we're 36 companies. We have um, a few companies uh, which support the ecosystem within China. We have a few data centers here and there. We have almost 48 data centers globally, 19 regions, 200 plus solutions. We are the third largest cloud company in the world as of today. We will be opening our UK data center very soon. A lot of our data centers, people ask me, is this just China? So it is a lot of China, but it is also in the US. It is also within uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia. Uh, Dubai, we were the first to launch in Dubai, but uh, watch out for UK. UK should be there next month. Somebody also asked me if, I, if we were PCI compliant or payment card industry data security standard compliant. We are heavily compliant. So we are ISO 22000, ISO 23000, ISO 27001. Uh, somewhere under the covers, we are ISO 9000 certified as well. So Alibaba itself is heavily regulated in China. You will see MTCS T3. We are heavily regulated within Singapore as well. And uh, C5, which is for Germany now. Um, so Germany as well, so we have the accreditation. We were the founder for the GDPR clauses, so please don't hate us for GDPR. Um, but we, all, we were also the first to get a, a gold cloud certification for uh, CSA, so the first cloud provider. So I hope this gives you a bit of an idea of the accreditation certifications that we have. This is our cloud portfolio. 
for Alibaba, which is available in the overseas region. I'm not going to bore you with this. We're going to talk about DevOps. We look after a few industries. We did the largest event, uh, retail event in the world. We earned $25.4 billion in one day. We support 325,000 transactions, which is equivalent to an ATM switch uh, within any country as of today. And we also ship almost 1 billion deliveries the same day. So the scale is massive for what we do. We have one third of the Chinese companies hosted on Alibaba. We also work with some of the largest brands around the globe, uh, such as Philips, such as Singpost. So is DevOps a buzzword or is it a trend? And like trends, somebody told me some time back, you know, artificial intelligence is a trend, DevOps is a trend. Uh, when we started doing or I graduated doing development lifecycle, software development lifecycle. It was a little about capturing requirements, and I'm sure a lot of people did a lot more than that before that. Um, some bit of testing, some bit of releasing, and it was more or less waterfall. So I thought, well, if it's a trend, Google should know about this. Uh, so I went forward, and I got a Google trend map. Software development is now known as DevOps within the entire world. Uh, within Europe, I did specific searches, within United Kingdom, within Asia. So it is, uh, it is another word, if you're searching for how to do development nowadays, what is the procedure to do development, the methodology to follow, the terminology, what is the best practice, it is DevOps. SDLC is a thing of the past. So what do organizations think of it? 92% think it is extremely critical. 27% say we will become highly agile uh, by incorporating some DevOps practice within our uh, organization. We've seen through uh, the, new, the new Puppet uh, report is out for 2018, but the 2017 one mentioned software deployments occur 47 times faster. If you've been a software developer, if you were a release manager, you know this is important. Recovery from failure is almost 96 times. So what we mean by this is, if you have introduced something into your code which does not work all of a sudden, how, do you, how quickly do you recover within the agile world? How much time does it take before your next release? And does your customer actually come knocking on your door when things don't work? 440 times faster lead time to change. And my personal favorite, it takes almost 20% of the time to recover from changes that you've made to fix the earlier changes. So DevOps has come a far way. It is a mature technology. These are respondents, 100 plus respondents across the globe. The 2018 report was a, a, a lot better. The 2018 report mentioned, this is all great. We've got DevOps under control. You know, it's faster, we can break quickly, we can fix quickly, we can deploy quickly. But what about reuse? So the report that was just released yesterday, reuse is at 44 times. If you reuse a pattern, uh, it is much more beneficial. Testing pattern, code pattern, and 44 times more likely to contribute to uh, another department. Or your software team could be seen as the tooling team for all other businesses. So where do I see DevOps as of today? I see it as a mix of things. A lot of people talk about continuous integration, and I skipped those slides. So I was going to emphasize here. So continuous integration, continuous testing, continuous release, continuous deployment. Uh, for me, DevOps is all of this. DevOps is, is a little bit of continuous architecture. It is continuous budgeting for those of us who who've been through DevOps and know what it feels like to approve budgets again and again, continuous risk and security assessment, and continuous configuration management. As of today, a lot of people are focusing on how to get to continuous testing. I release my code, I deploy it, it builds, it deploys. How do I test it very quickly? How do I automate these tests? And how do we fix it very quickly? Uh, people have started focusing on security as well, uh, security for DevOps. But what is very interesting is uh, the requirements portion and the continuous governance portion. So DevOps is still a little bit on how do we govern this? How do we govern change? How do we govern configuration? 
How do you govern some of these new methodologies that are coming up very quickly? So is it necessary if you automate you will be more likely to release something in 10% of the time that you were earlier. You'll also be more likely to reduce your release cycle by 20%. And if you're going to market, you'd probably half the time for going to market. Some benefits for DevOps, uh, my personal favorites are single click provisioning. So how many of you use cloud technologies as of today? That's almost everyone. So that's why we like it. So single click provisioning. If you can click and deploy a cluster and install an app within the cluster, uh, it, will, uh, it, it is known as single click provisioning. It is something that happens fairly quickly. And that is the cloud dream and the DevOps dream. Hence, we are kind of joined at the hip bone with that. Faster adoption of best of breed technologies. With DevOps, you don't need to worry about how to configure solutions, how to deploy solutions, how to make files, how to build files. You already have this package. You already have this ready for release. So beautiful stats. How do we, how do we get this done? Previously, you could deploy in almost under an hour. So this, these are real numbers. It takes five minutes to write you, maybe perhaps five minutes to write your code, 15 minutes to build a file almost 20 minutes for a Jenkins build or Jenkins continuous integration, five to 10 minutes to develop, and your testing cycle, uh, if you're lucky, is 10 minutes. Um, and then release it to production. Nightly builds were a thing of the past. People do stop their builds now. People do uh, have release managers responsible for making sure code does not go into production, uh, which is not tested. So testing has become uh, excessively important. Uh, in a simple way, DevOps is a source code repository, which we've all used and which we're all familiar with. There is a continuous integration server where all the code merges. And then once a code has merged, there is a continuous deployment mechanism uh, for, this, uh, for this service. But this, these are the tools or the technologies required. So everything is not just software uh, or hardware. It is, it is the methodology, it is how it's done. And then different tools and how it is promoted through those environments. So if we are at the test environment, how do we go from the test environment to the staging environment and then the production environment? And when I'm deploying, are my configurations consistent between these three environments? So DevOps is a little more. This is, this is an oversimplified image. And then when I have the perfect image, which is built up through my CI and CD servers, should I be storing this image? Uh, how do I store it? How do I configure it? How do I version it? What is the configuration drift within these images? So it's a little bit more for an oversimplified image. At Alibaba, the way we do it is uh, we have a technology called Code Pipeline. It's very similar to some of the other technologies that you've seen from other vendors. Um, the Code Pipeline provides an infrastructure or an ecosystem to build your code and promote it through these environments. We support container service. Uh, our container service is based on uh, Kubernetes, Swarm uh, clusters. It is Doc uh, we work very closely with Docker in China. Uh, too closely, actually, we have an office with them. And um, a platform as a service. So we work with uh, Kubernetes, Cloud Foundry, we're Kubernetes native. For infrastructure as a service or infrastructure as a code, somebody asked me about Terraform. Terraform is a new tool for building cloud uh, or orchestrating cloud, packing different images, orchestrating it for a multi-cloud or hybrid environment. So as of today, we are very much Terraform compliant. This is what we recommend. Uh, for resource orchestration service, Ansible, Chef, we are compliant to all of these. We, uh, we work with them. We have APIs available, we have SDKs available, uh, and a CLI, if you don't like the console or the web page that we have. At Alibaba, it's, it's fairly simple. We, uh, we have technologies for this. There's a code pipeline, a resource orchestration service, and an object storage service that we use for image storage and retrieval. Our object storage service is uh, our web bucket, or bucket storage. It's an HTTP storage where things can be stored. You can store up to 5 GB and retrieve it for free if, you're, if you want to try the environment. The code pipeline is the DevOps tool and the resource orchestration is our JSON-based tooling mechanism for deploying 
uh, different components into our environment. And we can do this, once you have an image, you can do this for test, you can do this for staging, you can do this for production. Then when you have the next image, you can pick that from OSS and do the same again. So this is all very good. And I saw some quiz looks on, ah, oh, this can't be DevOps, Asif. So we, we do DevOps like that for starters. This is how my clients look like as of today. We have a very complex environment for production, staging, performance, integration, and dev test. The pipeline I spoke of, or the dev pipeline, is only limited to the dev environment. We will have a few number of stacks with different configurations within dev. There would be other stages where the application will go from. Naturally, it's not just one product or one service that we use. There is compute services, there's auto scalers, there are load balancers, there's resource orchestration service, there's file storage as well, and some NAT gateway. We have some security products too. Um, all three of these products are free from Alibaba, actually all four, and an identity access management. So all of these are very tightly integrated. So it is a secure, accessible environment or uh, an environment where you can give access or RBAC access to your developers with protection from uh, web attacks as well as an ability to orchestrate your components and offer the same level of technology that you would have available anywhere else in terms of caching, in terms of database, without worrying about how to manage your database, without worrying about how to manage your caching or uh, compute nodes. So DevOps, um, it's a way of life for most of us. Some of the best practices that I've seen my customers uh, come across in the, in, in, the, in the recent past is some DevOps, um, if you use DevOps, just like you shift left for testing, use DevOps from the start. You can't introduce DevOps during uh, a testing cycle. You will throw your project uh, almost away or discard it if you're doing that. If it's critical, you do that. If it's not critical, stick with the old methodology. Define it early, define a systems architecture. It is very nice to have a running platform for architecture. Uh, believe me, none of the architects like it. <laughs> so define what you're doing, what you're setting out to do, what each team is doing, what components are reusable, what is core for you. Um, at the same time, create some kind of real availability, uh, real time visibility for your project. Have monitoring, have metrics, have reporting on your teams, have reporting on how quickly you're building how quickly you can stop your builds, what you're testing, what the code coverage is, what you can stress test, and how quickly you can release and set similar expectations with your clients. Um, also, if you find something very difficult within DevOps, uh, the recommendation is to do it more frequently. So if it is testing and testing is slowing down, do more testing uh, and speed up. Uh, it sounds very simple, but this is quoted in a lot of places. And always have um, a feedback. So the DevOps world is the infinity loop. Always have feedback for what has worked so you can plan for your next stage. So that's uh, me for today. I hope you found that interesting. That was a lot of numbers and some technologies. Thank you for listening patiently and uh, thank you for your time.